Good morning, I'm Amy Slaughter Myers, one of the co-rectors here at St. Francis Episcopal Parish and Community Center. This is the second of several reflections inspired by Matthew Desmond's book, Evicted, Poverty and Profit in the American City. You don't need to have read the book in order to hear this reflection and think and reflect yourself about what comes up for you, but I can highly recommend the book. Matthew Desmond was embedded um, in this community in Milwaukee, and he lived with these eight families who are impacted by the housing crisis this, um, in 2016. This issue, of course, as many of you know, is quite close to us here at St. Francis because so many of our community center programs work with folks who are caught in cycles of unstable housing. And especially now in 2021, with the eviction crisis ever widening all across the country due to the COVID-19 emergency, this book is as urgent as it ever has been before. Um, I'm gonna re reflect on chapter nine in the book, which is called Order Some Carry Out. It's an interesting chapter for two reasons. One is it looks at the moving companies who are hired by the landlords and the sheriffs to evict families and what it feels like and what they see, the people who make their money uh, evicting families day after day after day and the toll that that uh, takes on them. And it's that, that, that story is interwoven with the story of Lorraine who is facing eviction yet again and who goes through a very well-worn cycle of nonprofits and family members and churches asking for money for rent. So I'm gonna read you a brief paragraph. This is when she goes to her church um, and asks her pastor, Pastor Daryl, for help. Pastor Daryl felt torn. On the one hand, he thought it was the job of the church, not the government, to care for the poor and the hungry. That to him was pure Christianity. When it came to Lorraine though, Pastor Darrell believed a lot of hardship was self-inflicted. Quote, she made some stupid choices, spending her money foolishly, making her go without for a while may be the best thing for her so that she can be reminded, hey, when I make foolish choices, there are consequences, unquote. Desmond continues, it was easy to go on about helping the poor, helping a poor person with a name, a face, a history, and many needs, a person whose mistakes and lapses of judgment you have recorded, that was a more trying matter. I was reminded in reading that uh, paragraph around how easy it is for me to pass judgment on other people how easy it is for me to distinguish myself from other people and to say and to think that were I in that same circumstance, I would have made better choices. I would have done differently. Jesus, twice in the Gospels, calls our attention to this very human human expression of sin. This is Matthew chapter seven. Judge not that you be not judged. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? Why do you see the speck that is in your sister's eye? Why does Pastor Darrell see the speck 
that is in Lorraine's eye? Why do you see the speck that is in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother? How can you say to your sister? How can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? First, take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly. I wonder how you hear this passage today. I wonder if you're anything like me and notice how quickly you go to judgment when you are confronted with other people's needs and other people's lives and how, uh, how that is a temptation in this work, uh, in this work here at St. Francis Episcopal Parish and Community Center and in this work as a Christian. I wonder how you hear that today. And I wonder how you, like I, will ask God to free you, free you from the log in your own eye so that you, so that I can indeed be an instrument of God's peace and justice and unconditional love in this world. Amen.